Precinct 23, the Kempsville High School is the largest voting district in Virginia Beach. Over 7,000 people are registered to vote. And the line showed it. They went on and on and on. The precinct has been so jammed today that election officials are not sure just how many people have voted. They were too busy reminding voters to hurry up. One minute in the voting booth, please. The long line sometimes meant short tempers, but election officials say things are going as smoothly as can be expected. There have been maybe two or three who were upset because they did not give the registrar a change of address, and or maybe their names were deleted if they had not voted in four years. Even the afternoon rain didn't seem to slow things down. The voters kept on coming. Some were upset, like Carter campaigner Marlene Hager. She spent over an hour in line this morning, and she was angry. When you complain that they don't come out to vote, and then, you know, the wherewithal isn't there for them to vote, and they've got to stand in long lines. We only have nine voting machines, I think, in there, nine or ten. We should really have 15 or 20 when you have 7,000 registered voters in one precinct. The lines have been this long or even longer ever since the voting booths opened at 6 o'clock this morning. The backlog is expected to continue for about another half hour when the polls close. As one election official says, even though the line is three blocks long, they'll close it at that point, but the voters will be able to cast their ballots. Chris Cahoon, Area 10 Eyewitness News, Virginia Beach. Well, this is the way it's been since 6 o'clock this morning, a long line of voters here at Churchland Academy. Whatever apathy may have kept people from voting in the past is not present today, at least not here. Voters waited up to 30 minutes at the Portsmouth Precinct. When they were finished, we asked some of them if the choice was easy. Was it a hard choice for you to make today? No, no, I was glad to do it. <laughs> okay, and now how do you feel, sir? Was it a difficult choice for you or? No, I've already, I was already knew who I was going to vote for. And no, ch no second thoughts at all? No second thoughts. No. And you? Ronald Reagan all the way. My mind was made up pretty, uh, pretty early. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, <laughs> I decided who I wanted to vote for quite early. And it was, no, it was no problem whatsoever. On the question of who they thought would win or who they wanted to win, voters had this to say. Well, I think it's going to be a close race, but I know who I'm going for. I've always gone Democratic, and I think that's the way I'm going to go now. But I think it's going to be pretty close. Do I want to win? I guess Jimmy Carter. I've always voted Democratic, so I guess I'll keep on voting. It sounds like it's a hard <laughs> choice for you to make, I guess. kind of is. A little up in the air. I haven't really decided yet. Now comes the moment of suspense, waiting to see if you went with a winner or loser. And with the large turnout here in Portsmouth today, a lot of people are going to be disappointed. Tony Rawls, Area 10 Eyewitness News, Portsmouth. The mood at the Portsmouth Women's Club tonight was one of jubilation. Early election returns had incumbent Congressman Robert Daniel winning handily over his Democratic opponent Cecil Jenkins. Arriving 45 minutes late didn't sway the mood of this crowd either, who enthusiastically welcomed their candidate. To have gone through a tough campaign as this one was with my co-workers, which is the way I regard everyone here, and to have come through as successfully as we did is one of the most gratifying, meaningful events of my life. I was unopposed in 1978, but to be opposed and to win with company like you is worth having the opposition, really. Ovry in Chesapeake was somewhat glum as Cecil Jenkins conceded defeat and congratulated campaign workers. I've looked at the results and the returns and it, uh, it does look as if my opponent uh, in this particular race has won. And um, I certainly wish to congratulate him uh, on his victory, uh, but I certainly want to thank all the many hundreds and the many thousands of people who have worked, you know, in our behalf on our campaign. Ava Hurdle, Area 10 Eyewitness News. And uh, there was just no way that uh, an incumbent can tell people, I'm going to do something different uh, than I have been doing, and so those three things will go away. That was a luxury that uh, Governor Reagan could afford. He could say, uh, without having to define it, he could simply say, I've got a different plan to control inflation and a different plan to get the hostages back uh, and a different plan for unemployment. And he was never required to say what those plans were. 
This is Chris Cahoon. Virginia Beach voters who had to contend with a ballot jam pack full of referendums, constitutional amendments, and candidates were also confronted with some of the most crowded polling places in recent memory. One city official estimates that 5,000 people simply turned around and went back home. Case in point, Kempsville High. Average wait, 45 minutes. The problem is over 7,000 people are registered to vote here. That's 2,000 more than the law allows. But the large number of voters cannot be cut because that requires redistricting, a job the General Assembly takes up next year. The registrar's office was caught in the middle. It was just a, a situation that I was caught in that uh, I couldn't do anything about. The one law prevented me from doing it, and uh, so uh, that I was just caught in a situation I couldn't do anything about. Uh, if we would split the precinct down to approximately 2,000 registered voters, um, that would keep the lines down because there wouldn't, wouldn't be that many people coming out to, to vote. So you wouldn't have the long lines because you wouldn't have the, uh, the masses of people. Despite the crowds and the long wait, voter interest was high. The turnout was about 78%. Nevertheless, election officials say to keep that voter interest alive, they must cut down on the number of people in the precincts. Chris Cahoon, Area 10 Eyewitness News, Virginia Beach. You want to change the food on? <laughs> They have not precinct did, but the second one, uh, first ward, second precinct did not. Well, I don't. Like people spend money, I'll be relaxed. <laughs> Election night, Irene Walker thought she won the clerk of court race in an upset victory over longtime friend and former Chesapeake Mayor Marion Whitehurst by more than 300 votes. When the more than 30,000 ballots were canvassed, that margin of victory dropped to merely 71 votes. How did you react when you found out you lost over 200 votes? Sick. Didn't want any lunch, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> State law allows a candidate to petition for a recount if the winning margin is less than one half of one percent, which is the case in the clerk of court race. However, Walker, who says the electoral board did a wonderful job, quite naturally says a recount is a waste of time. And I, I don't think it would be in, to an advantage to either party. I think the results would probably be substantially the same. Whitehurst now has 10 days to petition circuit court for a recount in hopes of making up the 71 vote difference. The biggest chance for margin of error is among the 1,461 absentee ballots, about 1,200 of which were cast on paper and therefore counted by hand instead of machine. Mike Deason, Area 10 Eyewitness News, Chesapeake. Uh, I am today announcing my resignation from that office as state chairman to become effective on November the 22nd at the next meeting of the state uh, central committee. It came as no surprise that Democratic State Chairman Richard Davis is leaving his job. He's had his eyes on the lieutenant governorship for some time. But several party members think Davis's timing might be bad considering the results of Tuesday's election. Davis disagrees. Well, it's being done today in deference to the party so that the party will have an opportunity to begin quickly its reorganization for the 1981 election. Whether I'm a part of that nominating process or not is really not material, but the party itself needs to get in place those persons who are going to be responsible for the spring elections. Though Davis did not announce his candidacy for lieutenant governor, he talked as if he was in the race. For example, the Democrats says some Republicans have offered him encouragement. But you would be amazed in the last 48 hours the number of persons who have called me who are Republicans and who have said, we know that you were contemplating running. Uh, we hope that whether you run or not will not be a decision in the negative will not be determined based on the results of the national election. Davis admits his next step in seeking the lieutenant governorship is simply to make an announcement, but he says that won't come until he re-examines Tuesday's Democratic defeats and takes an honest look at his own chances. Chris Cahoon, Area 10 Eyewitness News, Richmond.